Welcome to the Imaginarium. I'm Hippie Hacker. So glad you could join us for this journey. We're going to talk a bit about the Cloud Native Computer Foundation and a bit about certified Kubernetes, particularly the journey we've been on together and how we're almost there. One moment while I drop some beads. So, some of our story starts in another community that I was a part of. Chef. I met some really interesting people at Chef. Adam Jacobs himself and Noah Krenowitz, Code Ranger. Very unique and interesting people. Adam's very metal and Code Ranger is very community. They share some, some DNA around culture being super important. I joke that the revolution will not be televised. <clears throat> It'll be coded, not necessarily with Chef, but with all of the culture that operational code can bring. <clears throat> requires a place for us to chat about said things. And the hashtag here in front of Chef is for an IRC channel, which is where we used to internet relay chat before things like Twitter were around. And there's a really good story about someone who came to our IRC chat, wanting to impress their significant other with some cool food that they would prepare at home. And I loved how Noah came forward and included them and said, absolutely, we'll give you a hand. And that impressed me. And I carry that culture forward with me. And I think I also see remnants of that in the Kubernetes community. Thank you for Noah for bringing that forward. And thank you for Adam for setting up a company where culture was so important. While I was working there, I got to work at some really cool places that meet some really cool people. One of them included working on boats, bigger boats, really big boats, cruise ship boats. And I got to work with a couple of people to help them deploy the cloud onto said boats. It was Aaron Krickenberger and Bob Wise. Now, onto these ships via satellite while they were at sea. We would deploy the cloud onto the hardware itself, which I found really fun and really interesting. And I thought about that for a while and I really enjoyed my time working with Bob and Aaron. There were things that were difficult about that time. One was that containerization was just coming into play. Solomon Hikes and friends were iterating so fast that it made it hard to develop solutions on top of this technology. We needed it. Docker on the ships at sea. But we also needed a way to orchestrate that. And that's where some of our friends at Google came into play. And in their spare time, 20% time, I think they came up with Kubernetes. And that helped to orchestrate beyond just having a container engine and that ecosystem that developed into something that was beginning to kind of coalesce into something extremely, extremely valuable to, to all of us. Now, we've got Kubernetes and we've got Docker. And I realized that I'd like to play with that. So I began working with some of my friends. And 
there were some servers given to us by by Bob, the same ones we deployed at C. And so I worked with some friends of mine and we created a co-op. That's the Vault Cooperative. So it was myself and Lucina, Taylor, and Wavell, and, and, and a few others. But these were the core folks I spent my time with at Volk. And we did some pretty cool stuff together. And I've known Taylor for well, since college. We were good old college buddies. And I ended up going back to New Zealand um, and tried to bring the servers with me. But I did not have the funds. It was quite expensive to get the servers over there. So I reached out to my friend, Bob. I said, hey, Bob. Bob said, hey, Ippy. I said, can you help me get these servers over there? He said, no. But I know someone who I'd like to introduce you to. He said, I want you to meet Dan. Dan was working on a new Linux Foundation thing called the Cloud Native Compute Foundation. And he said, I think Hippie can help you with that. And I really thank you for the introduction, Bob. Um, Dan was a real, real visionary. And he was thinking about how can we, in this initial stage, just demonstrate what the cloud is. We worked on demo, CNCF slash demo on GitHub. And slowly that evolved into things like CNCF.ci which my friends at Volk worked on as well. And when I was back in New Zealand, I'll down here. I found that a cooperative in New Zealand to kind of parallel the cooperative in the States. And that's where II was born. And this cooperative ended up founding it with Denver Williams. As a teenager, he traveled from New Zealand to Berlin to speak on Kubernetes. And he has since joined Volk, and I'm super proud of it. CNCFCI has since been taken over by the Volk team. And, and between Volk and II, we do a lot of the strategic initiatives for the CNCF. This focus for this talk is all about certified Kubernetes. And last time I was in China, I brought a friend from New Zealand with me. Her name was Indigo Phillips. Now Indy brought her culture with her on that journey. And she shared with us her Pepiha. Now her Pepiha is her name and her home, and her lake and her mountain and the place in which she meets with her people and the canoe in which she arrived on, her ancestors arrived on, and her tribes. And there's a, another special protocol of introduction that she shared with us called Fakapapa, which is the lineage of ancestors from that boat or that waka that first landed in New Zealand. And it's Part of that protocol and that introspection of sharing the identity of who she is, Indigo Phillips, age 42, New Zealand Māori, currently at that time speaking at KubeCon, traveling to Shanghai and sharing her culture with the tech world. And the sources, the locations she's from are from Tauranga, Bay of Plenty, Aotearoa, where we're broadcasting from today, and Rotorua, which is about an hour from here, a lovely place. And there's a lot of parallels in that introduction that we suggested that maybe we do in our software world as well, where our software might say, here's my version. I'm currently talking to an API server. And here's the things I'm doing at the moment. The source and locations being functions inside of our code repositories to identify looking at the history. Who would be best to talk to? to help define what it is that we want to test. Thank you so much, Indigo, for sharing your culture with us and influencing how Kubernetes is defined. Now, in order for us to 
have Kubernetes agreed on and defined by us as a community, we need to have people who can take a look at it first and say, that looks good to me. And we need people who can go through and approve it fully and say, I am authority in this area, we can approve it. So I'm gonna add in a few of those people real quick, if I can find them. We're gonna pull out Dems, Liggett, Tim Hawken, and these were our, some of our LGTMers that said, this looks good to me. So we'll put them here within our list of people to help define what Kubernetes is as an LGTMer. And in addition, we had John Bellamark, Smarter Clayton, and Timothy St. Clair that were part of the approvers for a long time. And I'm super thankful that we got there slash approve on many of these changes. Um, those changes were made in part, if not mainly, by our team at, at II. And I have them right here. Rion Kleinhans, Caleb Woodbine, Stephen Haywood, and Zach Mandel. I love that we have all of these faces that are part of that, that wild journey and that I've got to spend some time with and help define what, what Kubernetes is. Um, one thing we noted early on in that journey is that Ken Omichi showed up to one of the meetings, I believe, uh, um, one of the TOC meetings, and he's like, Governing is a governing board meeting. Um, he said, do you know that we don't actually have tests for around 10 to 11% of Kubernetes? And we were kind of in shock that that was true. And we looked and sure enough, he was right. So Dan said, let's do something about that. And so Dan shared a picture of his hard drive. This is actually a picture of Dan Khan's hard drive with some software that scans the folders. He said, can we do something that might let us look at the Kubernetes API that might look something like this? And Rowan and some other friends at II were able to put together uh, an image that looks like this, very similar to Dan's vision or image of his hard drive called a starburst chart. And you'll notice at the end of the bars, there's plenty of space in between, and this is actually untested areas. And so at this point, when we finally got a graph together, only 14% was conformance tested, which is pretty wild thinking that we, all of our applications globally, all of our Kube apps, <laughs> um, only had a solid surface area of about 15% to work with. But over time, we began to fill in those blanks. You can see here that they got a bit better over time. Um, but this is for every possible API. And with our SIG architecture meetings and the people who can approve those APIs, we slimmed it down to focus just on the APIs that were required for everybody. And that means the stuff not within the red or the blue, but only the green. So these are the APIs as they've evolved. Here was a 36% of just the stuff available to be tested, slowly filling it in here, over time, here, until we get to our most recent one. And this is what's looking really, really great. You see the amount of progress we've made and how very few items remain to fill in. And I'm super thankful that we are gonna get there this year. This is the year that we wipe out all of that technical debt. We can see 
that journey most clearly in our up into the right graph with all the release numbers here at the bottom. I'm really digging that we haven't had any more orange, which was technical debt getting added, and we haven't had any um, regression. So that means that this is continually getting smaller, and at this rate, we'll be done within the next two to three releases. And that is very exciting to me. So by you know Q Q4, Q Q3, Q2, Q3, somewhere in there, we should be pretty far along with um, squashing all of these out of the way. And that is um, something I'm super excited. And I know Dan would be happy to see. Um, this is new endpoints, I believe, for 118. And they got introduced without test. And this is part of the gates that we have in place. Um, and those gates are put in place not only for new APIs coming through, but for new people submitting their tests. So it's been lovely to see tooling like Heptio's Sonoboy being used to help people easily submit conformance results and collect them. But they are filtered through Robert and uh, I have to move out of the way for a second. We'll hold them up here through uh, Robert Kilties, Rob Kilties and uh, Berno Klein Hans's um, software that runs in Prow for helping Taylor Wagoner defend the certification. So if company submissions run with Heptio, Sonoboy, get past the gates defined by Rob and Berno, then Taylor will give them the final approval and they'll have certified Kubernetes. So I hope you've enjoyed this journey, and I want to thank each of you for your eyes. And I want to do um, it's kind of a moment to remember Dan and KubeCon. It was um, his vision and belief in each of us that um, inspired this program to come to being and I look forward to um, seeing this come to full fruition and erasing all of that debt. I'll see each of you face to face someday and eye to eye. Peace.